And we are recording and we are live. So welcome everybody who's joining. Um, I don't I don't have cool background music this this week like I normally do. Um, I don't know why. I just decided not to. But welcome everybody. Um, while you are joining, um, I've changed things up slightly. We don't have any questions this week. Um, you can you can if you haven't already, you can kind of start getting your local environment set up. We're going to go through the process anyway. Um, but if you want to start installing and activating the Gutenberg plugin, um, downloading and activating the workshop theme, uh, and then optionally, if you want to check out the design we're going to be looking at, we will go through the process later. And then just if you want to say hi, say hi in the chat um, or, or say hi verbally. Um, nice to see some familiar faces, nice to see some new faces. Um, cool. I'm not going to hang around the usual five minutes today. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of get things going. Um, because there's quite a lot I want to cover today. I have set the session for an hour and a half, um, just because I'd like to give us enough time to kind of play with things and do things and, and fiddle with things. Um, I'm trying to not be too scripted today. So we're hopefully going to be building these things together. Um, I do have a list of notes to follow, but I'm going to try and remember how to do things and, and see if I can figure it out from, from memory. Um, OK, <clears throat> so let's get on with the usual announcements. Um, as always, uh, welcome and thanks to Thelma who's co-hosting with me today. Uh, we are presenting in focus mode as per normal. Um, I know that uh, one of our regular participants has been having some problems with focus mode. So if you are having some issues with focus mode, let me know, but otherwise we should be good to go. As always, you are welcome to ask questions either in the chat or verbally uh, if you want to. Uh, and you are welcome to unmute to ask questions or as I say, post them in the chat. Um, then we will go through these links in a second. I'm going to grab these two links now and just pop them in the chat so that you have them. But we will be working with a pre-built theme um, that if you have some time to start downloading and installing, you can do. Um, and then a, a pre-designed design that we will be working with. Uh, and I'll talk through where I got it from and how it all works. The design is very simple. So we're not doing a very crazy design today. It's very simple, um, but it'll kind of give us something to work from. As always, if I'm going too fast, please let me know. Um, I shouldn't be going too fast today because I'm not coding. I'm doing things in the editor, which is not slow. I'm just slow um, using the editor. Um, but if I, if I, if you need to catch up or if you need me to to show you how I'm doing something, please do let me know. Uh, and as always, we will be posting this session to WordPress TV probably sometime during the course of the day tomorrow, and I'll link it in the chat in the meetup group, in the meetup event. Uh, and if you're looking for more word press content, please do visit learn.wordpress.org. Okay, today's learning outcomes. Um, we're going to be looking at the WordPress primary templates. We're going to do a quick overview of the template hierarchy if it's not something you've ever seen before. Uh, and then we're going to be creating one or two primary templates in the site editor, pure. Um, if there's time, hopefully there is time, we'll look at how we can take that content out and put it in, in actual files, but we'll just be working in the site editor today. And we'll be trying to follow a specific design. So we'll be looking at a design and then trying to implement that design in the editor. Um, and then obviously saving the template data. Um, <clears throat> I say, uh, I'm a lot. <laughs> Our objectives today are to review the template hierarchy, have a look at the theme JSON that we're going to be working with. And I'll talk a little bit about where the theme JSON comes from and, and how you could build it, put it together, but we won't actually be doing that today. Then we'll be looking at the current index template that is pre-built in the theme that we've got and kind of how that fits together. And then we'll start actually creating some, some pages and some template parts and, and doing all that kind of thing. Um, and then finally, right at the end of this time, we'll export that data to files. Uh, a lot of this is stuff we've covered before, but it's good to kind of see the process, um, I think at least in kind of practice. All right. So to get started, uh, if you haven't already, um, please install and activate the Gutenberg plugin. Now the reason, that we need the Gutenberg plugin installed and active is because WordPress 6.1 that's coming out on the 1st of November um, is basically going to have all of the features that are currently available in version 14.1 of Gutenberg, uh, which is the current version. I think it is 14.1. I can't see the version number there. I think if you click more details, it shows you the version number. Uh, yeah, 14.1.1. Um, so, we're effectively going to be replicating what WordPress 6.1 will, will be when it comes out in November. And the reason I want to do that is because there's some really cool features coming. Um, there's actually a fix for something. If you were if you were at the session that Sarah and I did last week, 
you'll remember we had some fun with your line wide. <laughs> so WordPress 6.1 actually fixes some of those issues that we were having and you'll see it live in action today, which is really cool. Um, yes, I did some research after that session. <laughs> um, so if you haven't already, uh, please get your local WordPress environment set up um, and install and activate the Gutenberg plugin. And then I'm going to ask if you are following along and if you are doing this process, please um, maybe three or four people just type ready in the chat when you've got that plugin installed. Uh, and then we'll move on to the next thing, which is going to be installed in the theme. Okay, Gene's ready. This is my opportunity to have, have a sip of coffee. <laughs> okay, so there are some folks that are ready. That's great. Then <clears throat> the other thing that I mentioned was this theme that we're going to work with. Um, so it's a theme that I re recreated, pre-created, I guess is the right word. Um, I've actually downloaded it, but I'll download it again. Um, and it basically just has a, um, a theme.json file and awesome Linda and a, a index template that's already pre pre-designed and pre-created and then some blank files, which is what we're going to build today. Um, so if you download the, the theme from that link, which is the first link that I posted in the chat, I'm going to post it again, just for anybody who arrived late. Um, how do I copy? <laughs> um, <clears throat> pop that in there and then go into your themes area in WordPress and add a new theme and upload the theme from wherever you've saved it. Uh, where's my desktop? There it is. So it's the Let's Code Workshop theme. You can see that I stole this idea from, from Sarah from last week. Um, she calls hers, I think hers is Code With Me and mine is Let's Code because I didn't want to reuse Code With Me. <laughs> um, so that's installed. Let's activate that. And let's very quickly go through what's included in this theme. So I actually got a screenshot, which is nice. Um, and let's have a look if we go into the editor. Um, you're welcome to do this along with me if you want to. So it has an index um, template already uh, pre-created, stop saying recreated, which just has, and I'm going to I'm going to use the list view icon here. If you've ever seen the list view, it's a little three, three lines at the very top of the site edit. It's very handy because it gives you a view, an overview of your template content. Um, and if I click here, then it shows you a drop down. So it's almost like a tree view in a in a file browser or in a code editor. Very very handy. Um, so there's literally just a query loop, and inside the query loop there is a post template block which contains by default post title, featured image, post excerpt, a separator, post date, and a space. So if you add a post template block in the editor and include all those other blocks inside, it's called inner blocks. Um, and then the pagination at the bottom. And this is your, your standard index template for a WordPress theme. Um, you can run a website with just an index template. I'll, I'll show you that right now. Um, it'll be a very simple website. <laughs> um, but if I go there, there's my first post. And if I click on my post, it'll show my post. Okay, the empty template doesn't work because there's no single there. That's because it's empty. But if it wasn't there, it would just use the index again and just show the single, the single post content. So you could run a blog uh, uh, with just an index um, template. I've done that before, but it's quite fun. Um, then we have in the templates list, there's the index template. Uh, then we have a page template, which is currently empty. And we have a single template. And that's why you saw that single template error because there is a sing single template that exists, but it has no content. Uh, if I remove that template, let's just do that quickly. Let's go over here and we go here, we can recreate it later. And let's move Zoom out the way so I can access my things. Um, oh, wait, I can't delete it from here because it's in code. Sorry. <laughs> Let me switch to my code editor. Um, and here's the theme. And let me just delete that template. So it's the single.html template. I'm just going to delete that. Uh, and then we'll go over to the site and refresh. And there we go. So it'll, it'll still load the single post using the index template. So you can run a full site, with, full blog at least. With just an index template. Um, and that was probably how WordPress first did themes back in the day, just that English template. Um, <clears throat> okay. So that's that. Let me go back to there. Uh, and then we have, as I said earlier, there was the page, which is empty, and the single I've deleted will recreate later, no problem. Then we also have some template parts. There's a footer and a header. Uh, the footer is also empty, so there's nothing in there. Um, and so is the header. And just to prove that to you, uh, let me switch to the code editor. 
So let's have a look here. So there's the footer, nothing in the footer. It's just footer.html, um, nothing in the header. It's just header.html. There's my index template with all of my code, uh, which I designed in the editor and then just saved. And then there's the page template, which has no code in it. Okay, so if everybody has got their, um, their theme installed, if a, if a couple of people could just type ready in the chat to let me know you've got that installed. If there are any questions at this point in time about anything I've shown you, now's also a great time to ask questions while I have another sip of coffee. <clears throat> okay uh will you post this record later Bailey? yes i will uh i will i will upload it to wordpress tv later and then i will link to it in the um in the meetup event in the comments so we will we will record it is it is recording uh, let me just double check that i'm pretty sure i did hit record uh yes it is still recording. okay um awesome so a few folks are ready so i think we can move on <clears throat> if you're not ready yet don't worry we're going to go and have a look at the design now the design is not important for you to have open on your desktop today because i'm going to be looking at the design while we're, while we're creating the, the the templates but if you want to open up the design it's the second link over here i'm going to paste that into the chat very quickly and the design tool that is being used here is a tool called figma um, i don't know much about these tools because i don't do any design work uh, in, in my developer experience, my developer journey, I was basically taking these designs from a designer and then turning it into a theme. Um, so it's probably a bit small on your screens right now. And that's because Figma can go really, really big and really, really small. So I'm trying to keep it like that. And I'll, I'll zoom into certain areas in a second. Um, but uh, let me just do something. There we go. Um, <clears throat> but basically, if you're, if you're like me and you've been working with WordPress for a number of years or you've been working with the web for a number of years, you will remember the old Photoshop days or using fireworks or many Adobe products and designers would usually design the website in one of those products. Uh, and then things like Sketch came along and things like Figma came along and then Adobe bought Figma recently, which was quite interesting. Um, but basically, if you were a developer who didn't do any of the design work, you typically got a design from a designer using one of these formats. And then you would take that and you would do your styling and you would do your templates and you would create everything from there. Um, if you were somebody who was a designer and a developer, you'd be using probably one of these tools. Uh, some folks used to design in the browser, which I find quite amazing. Um, some folks used to use uh, uh, um, frameworks like Bootstrap and like Tailwind. Um, but the sort of traditional approach was designer would design, hand it over to developer, and developer would then develop that into, into a website or into a theme. Um, so this theme is the 2023 base theme. So 2023 is the new default theme for when WordPress 6.1 comes out. Um, and what the, I actually just wanna find the link. I meant to have it open and then I forgot. What the design team did was, let's just go and find it here quickly. They open sourced all of their designs. Um, so the design team, can I spell design? <laughs> the design team is the open source team within WordPress that designs all the new um, default themes. And they also, um, members of that team work for Automatic and they design themes for WordPress.org and WordPress.com. Um, and I'm just gonna try, here we go. Here's the post, open, for, open, sourcing, open sourcing theme designs. I'm going to post that in the chat as well. So what they did was they took all of the themes that they've designed as block themes and they've open sourced the designs. Um, so you can go to you can go to Figma and you can view all the designs um, and you can and you can see what they look like, and then you can use that as a foundation for a new design of your own or whatever the case may be. So if I click on, you don't have to do this, but if I click on this link here, this takes me to the designs in Figma. Um, and there's a theme template, and then there's more, there's others, there's 2023, there's Bjork, there's Beaumont, there's a whole bunch of other designs that they've created. And you can then click on 2023. And then when you've got it open, 
if you if you've got a Figma account, you can click at the top here and say get a copy, and it will then copy that design into your Figma account, and then you can work with it. Um, so if you're interested to do that, you can you can go ahead and do that now. You can do it later if you want. Um, but it's a great way of working with designs, and, and that's kind of one of the nice things about Figma. This is the sort of web-based platform to be able to share designs and whatever else. So I've got a copy of that design, and that's this one that I've that I've linked to you um, over here. Um, if you can't see that, you can also get it from from this link. I'm going to actually get a copy of this out as well, um, and make your own copy. But that's what we're working with today. Um, so if you have a look at this design, you will see that. There are a couple of uh, pages in this design on the left-hand side of here. There is a base theme, which is basically the wireframes. Those of you who have been around for a while, you've probably heard the word wireframes quite a bit. So there's a wireframe for the home page, for, uh, home page template, for the page template, for the page without a featured image. I'm going to move over a bit. Uh, for the archive template, for the single post, single post without featured image, and the 404 page. I think there's a search as well. Um, there's a blog alternative and a search right at the end. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be focusing on the page template and we're going to be focusing on creating the single post template. Um, so if you want to have that open on your side, you're welcome to, but I'll zoom in and out as we go along. Okay, um, let me go back to my slides. So we've got those things up and running. The first thing we want to do uh, is take another break and check if anybody has any questions. If not, we're going to dive straight into the template hierarchy and we're going to do a quick review of what it is, how it works and why it's important for a WordPress theme. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions, so I'm going to move on unless somebody does have a question, then please feel free to post it. But the WordPress template hierarchy is essentially how WordPress takes your theme files and renders content. Um, so if we look at the text here, let me zoom in a little bit more so we can see what we're talking about. I think 140, no, 133 is probably fine. There we go. Um, Template files are modular reusable files used to generate the web pages on your WordPress site. Some template files such as header and footer are used on all of your pages while others are used for specific conditions. How WordPress determines which template files to use on individual pages is the template hierarchy. So this is a whole article that dives into it. Um, I don't wanna go over this too much, but basically if you look down, scroll further down, there's a visual overview of the hierarchy. I'm gonna click on that to make it nice and big. And you'll see that we've got, uh, I need to zoom, I think, out a bit because I can't see the, there we go. I can't see the key at the bottom. So I'm gonna talk through this. So if you can't see it 100%, uh, bear with me. But if you have a look right at the bottom of the screen here on the left-hand side, there's a key that says primary template, secondary template, variable template, and page type. And the primary templates are all the ones in purple on the right-hand side. So it's your index, your, your archive, your single or singular, your page or singular, and we'll talk about that in a second, your home, your 404, and your search. Now, remember when we were looking at the, the, base, theme, the base theme in Figma, they had the same ones. It was home page, single, blah, 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 blah. Those are the templates that you, where were we? We've lost it now. Uh, there it is. Those are the templates that you should have in every WordPress theme. Now, you'll notice that there's the singular and then single and page. You can ignore singular. Singular comes from when WordPress was just a blocking platform. When they added the functionality to allow pages, singular gets replaced by single and page. So your primary templates are index, archive, single, page, home, 404, and search. If you have those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven templates, your WordPress site can pretty much do everything it needs to do. All of the other templates are um, sort of additional templates that you can use to provide specific functionality. So for example, if you want to show an attachment in a specific way, you can create an attachment template. And then when an attachment renders, it'll render with that template. If attachment doesn't exist, it'll fall back to the next one below, which is the single. If single doesn't exist, it'll fall back to index. And that's why I said to you, index can be installed in a WordPress site will just work. So don't want to go into too much detail into how this all works, but basically when you load something on a WordPress site, so for example, let's say you are loading um, a single page. It'll start by looking for the singular page template, which is this one five on the left here. If it doesn't find that, it'll look for the single post page. If it doesn't find that, it'll look for, and it'll keep going down until it finds the templates in the render, and then it'll render it. And that's why your primary templates are so important, because then you can build different layouts on top of them, but you need that foundational layer. Okay. 
If you've never seen the template hierarchy before, I do recommend reading the, the whole handbook document that I, that I shared in the chat. Um, if you have seen it before and I'm boring you, I do apologize, but it's good to, it's good to refresh this before we start building in, um, in WordPress. Any questions on what is the template hierarchy, anything about how it works that you have that you want to ask now before we, before we move on? No. Okay. The hierarchy is so helpful, especially for us visual people. Yes, this, this screenshot, um, I have bookmarks somewhere. Um, and whenever I'm trying to remember which is which, I go straight here. Uh, and actually, um, myself and Sarah were busy working on block theme courses, which is why I'm doing all this block theme content for my workshops. And the question Sarah asked me was, does, is this the only screenshot? Because she's working with block themes, which are HTML um, files. And this one has um php files which is how themes used to work but it all works exactly the same uh, linda says did i miss something is the 2020 theme out or are we just copying the design good question it's not out yet um you can test it if you want to and i don't mind sharing this link because it's, it's publicly available if you go to wordpress I'll, I'll share this with you in the chat uh you can go there and you can download 2023 in your current wordpress install and you can play with it it hasn't been released yet. It will be released when 6.1 comes out. Um, and 6.1 is, is the aiming of uh, the target releases 1st of November. Uh, we're just using the 2023 designs to kind of copy and, and, and use as a base. I could have used one of the other ones, but I've just been working with 2023, so it was just easy for me. <laughs> uh, but you can, you can download it from here. You'll have to probably uh, check out the code and then create a zip file or whatever. There's no downloadable version of it yet. Um, okay, great. So let's go back a few steps. So by now you should have your uh, Gutenberg plugin installed and active. You should have your theme installed and active um, that you've downloaded. So let's move on. <clears throat> the first thing I want to do in the theme is just review the theme.json file. If you've been to a workshop about the theme.json file, you will remember that it is a way of setting up your theme settings and your theme styles without having to write CS too much CSS code. It is a structured format. It uses JavaScript object notation. So it's effectively a JavaScript object. Um, and if you have a look at, I'm going to move the cameras out of the way because they are distracting me. Um, a whole bunch of things. Set. So I'm going to minimize the styles for now in my, in my window. And we're just going to have a look at the settings to begin with. So in the settings, I've enabled appearance tools, which enables a whole bunch of functionality in a, in a WordPress theme, which I recommend if you're building a WordPress block theme, you enable appearance tools. I've set up two colors in a color palette. One is called base and the other one is called contrast and they have hex values. And I'll show you where those colors are in a second. I've set up the layout settings, the content size and the white size settings. If you were at last week's session, you will remember the fun we had with those. I'll show you how that works in a second. I've set up my spacing units, so the units that I want to make available to users when they're changing spacing related things, so margins and padding and all of that. I've set up my default topography. So my default topography is a system font and it uses whatever the operating system system font is. So if it's Apple, it'll use Apple. If it's Windows, it'll use whatever Windows is. If it's Ubuntu, it'll use Ubuntu, whatever the default operating system font is. Uh, and then I've set up some font sizes. So I'm not going to dive too much into the whole um, what REMs are, EMs are, that we covered that last week. But the first one is small, which is one REM, which if you remember from last week, that's actually 16 pixels. Then 1.125 REM is medium and so on and so forth. Now, if you're wondering, and, and, and those are all the settings, if you're wondering where these settings come from, let's go back to the design. The designer that has designed this for it has very nicely set out the style page for us. And in the style page, they've specified and they've said, They've said, they've said, this is the system fonts we should be using. So we should use the system font or full black to sans serif. Let me, let me zoom in on this for a second. Uh, so you can see values. Uh, heading one should be a size of 58 pixels, a weight of 400, a line height, blah, blah, blah. So a good designer will have given you all this information. Or if you're a designer, you'll have designed all this information for your developer, unless you're doing it for yourself. And you can then take this information and apply it into your theme to JSON. So you can say heading is this, fonts is that, um, base theme on mobile is this, 
Colors is all of these things, foreground, background, primary, secondary, buttons and link states, you can set this all up. Now, I'm not gonna go too, too much in depth into this today, but this is the process you would take to build your theme.json. Um, so for example, the first thing you might do, let's actually zoom out here for a second. You might say, okay, fine. I want to create the foreground color. The foreground color is black. So it's six, six, six zeros and a hash. So I would go into my theme JSON and I would go to the color palette and I would say, right, I want to create a new color. Um, and I'm going to say color is one, two, three, four, five, six, it's black. Uh, and I'm going to give it a name of what was it in the design? Let's have a look over here. We called it foreground. Uh, so I'm going to go foreground. And then I'm going to give it a slug of foreground. And then what that does, if you remember, is it creates a preset called, I think it's slash slash WP preset color foreground as the slug, which you can then use. Um, so for example, if we go down to the styles, there are the colors. So I can, their base is being set as the base background color, contrast is being set as the text color, which is the colors that we're, for example, setting up in the palette. Okay, so you would go through that whole process of setting up your style settings, setting your different styles for your different elements before you start actually building the templates. Okay, um, as I said, today is not about theme JSON. Um, we have done some sessions about that. It's the kind of thing that you need to kind of practice to get used to. Um, and it's the kind of thing that you will do over and over again. So that's why we recommend if you have like a base theme JSON that you like working with, use that and then you can design in the editor. Um, but that's the basics of how that works. Having a look at the styles. So we've got a background style set. We've got a text style set. We've set some colors to, to buttons elements. This is based on the style from the design to focus, to hover. We've set a specific uh, border radius. We've set a specific default color, a default font size. It's set to medium, not small or large, but medium. Uh, there's all the H1, H2, H3 settings. So setting the font size and the line height for each one, again, based on the design um, and those all things. And you would have this for every single element based on your styling. Uh, we've got heading topography. We've got link things happening. We've got spacing. We've got block gaps. We've got all kinds of things happening. And then right at the end, we've got the version of the schema. Um, so that you would do, and you would prepare it all based on those, based on that style guide, which is the server here. Uh, and then when you're ready, then you can start building your templates. Okay, before we move on, is everybody happy with that? Does anybody have any questions? If you're happy with that, give me a ready or a yay or a thumbs up in the chat. If you've got questions, now's a great time to ask them. And then we can start designing some templates. Okay, nobody seems to have questions. It's taken half an hour to get to this point. This is why I said it for an hour and a half. Um, so let's start doing some template design. So what I like to do when I'm, when I'm building a theme is I like to take a very simple template and use that as sort of a base to start with. Uh, and the reason I do that is because number one, I'm gonna be designing probably the header and the footer when I build that template, because I haven't got the header and the footer yet. Uh, and it kind of gets me into a feel for how things are going. So if I have a look at the base theme over here, uh, and I'm going to zoom out very quickly, but the, the page templates, if you, if you scroll left and right and have a look at all these different templates, the page template is probably the simplest template on the screen. Uh, let's zoom into it so we can see what it has. It's, it's very, very simple. It has the header at the top, which contains the, the title and what looks like navigation. It has a featured image, which we know from WordPress, WordPress pages have a featured image. It has the title. It has the content, in this case, it's text. And then it has a footer, which replicates again, the site title, and then this text of proudly powered by WordPress, which you'll know any default theme that WordPress puts out has that at the bottom. Um, so if I had any questions about this design, I would go back to my designer and I would say, well, look, what is the padding around this area? What is the width over here? You can actually, if you click on this, you can actually see the width there is a thousand pixels. That's very, very handy for us. Um, so that gives us an idea of how wide that image is on the screen. If we click on the text, we can see that 655 pixels. Um, if we look over here, we can see this width is 1,200. But if we look at the edge of where the site title sits, it's in line with the 1,000. So there's probably going to be padding of, of 100 pixels on either side. So we're starting to understand how this all fits together. Um, so now we can start building this. Okay. So let's go back into our editor. <clears throat> 
And let's go and build, which one was that? That was the, the single page template. Um, now, I think I deleted that or didn't I? No, I deleted the single. Let me delete the page as well. And I'm gonna show you why in a second. Uh, I'm just gonna delete the empty template there. And I'm going to refresh this. <clears throat> so I don't have a single page template yet. I want to create the single page template. Sorry, the, the page template, not the single page template, the page template. The cool thing about the site editor is it has this add new button. And if I click on the add new button and you'll only see this now if you're running WordPress 6.0 and with Gutenberg, it'll list a whole bunch of templates. And without Gutenberg, this, this list is slightly shorter. But what you'll notice is that all of the primary templates we discussed earlier are listed here. The front page is here, the single is here. There's the page, there's the archive. Okay, we don't need author category, date, tag, and taxonomy yet. But there's search, there's 404, and there's the single post item. And that's probably related to the singular because uh, we've got the single up here as well. And we can create custom templates. So anything that falls outside of the primary templates. So that's very, very cool. So I want to create the page template. So I can literally just hit page, boom. And it'll ask me, do I want to create this for all pages or just for a specific page? Now, because I'm still designing, I don't quite know what I'm going to use this page for yet. So from now, I'm just going to say use it for all pages. Um, so we'll just tag all pages there. And notice what happens. It creates the page template. And we can see that because it says page over there. But it comes with some content. And that content is copied from your index template. So it takes the index template, copies all the content, and jams it into the page which is cool because at least then you can see something, you've got something to work with. Um, and it puts you in edit mode so you can start editing. If we have a look at the list view, we can see there's the query loop, which we saw earlier. Uh, I think you can, can you minimize this? No, you can't, it's, it's one size. Um, so, and there's the post template and there's the pagination. I don't need this stuff. I wanna start creating from scratch. So I can just over here, either on the query loop in the list view, I can tick on the little three dots and I can say remove or I can click on the query loop itself. Now you'll notice when I click on, for example, the, the header, it, it selects the post title header. But if I, this um, toolbar here is the block toolbar. If I mouse over that first icon there, it'll actually select the parent container. So it'll go up to the post template. And then the block toolbar is at the bottom here and I, there it's selecting the query loop. So I can go up to the query loop template. And then from there, I can use the toolbar to remove the loop in the editor. So there's a couple of ways that I can do this. I prefer the list view way. Um, I don't know why, I just do, but there's many, many options. So let's remove the query loop. And now we've got a blank template. I'm just gonna close this down quickly. I don't need the settings right now. So now let's go back to our design. So the first thing in our design is our header. So let's create the header in the template. So what I'd like you to do if you're following along is either in the editor or in the list view, wherever you wanna do, just hit either the block inserted button or you can type, which is what I like to do, you can type forward slash, and then it'll bring up this list. And I want you to add a group block. Now, group blocks and row blocks are very good for organizing content. If you come from a, a bootstrap environment, you'll know there was usually like container divs, a div with a class of container, and that had certain formatting to it. That's kind of what a group block is in, in the template editor, in the theme editor. So it's a good thing to use to group common things together. And it'll enable some functionality, which I'll show you in a second. So we'll start by adding a group block. Inside the group block, I want you to add a row block, which you can either do by clicking on the plus there, or you can go block inserter again, or you can here and you can say insert before, after, and move it around. I'm just going to do it from here in the editor. I'm going to click on the plus, and I'm going to search for a row block. Okay. Inside of the row block, we're going to add the site title and the navigation. So again, I'm just going to hit plus. And I'm going to search for site title. There it is. And now I want to add the navigation. Now, currently, <clears throat> excuse me, the site title is selected. I want to show you what happens if I just click plus now. It's going to open this up on the left here. And I don't know where it's going to go. So what I like to do is I like to make sure I know where things are going. So this is where I find the list view very handy. If I click on the three little dots next to the site title in the list view, I can then say insert after. And this is why I like the list view. And it'll start a new block. And then again, I can type and I can say navigation. And then I can pop the navigation block in. Okay. So that's one of the reasons why I like the list view is it enables me to target the specific areas that I want to add content and make sure I'm adding it in those areas. Okay. 
Does anybody need me to slow down? If any, if anybody who is following along um, wants to catch up, I'll, I'm going to take another sip of coffee and tell me to stop. Otherwise, I will continue after my sip of coffee. <clears throat> Okay, so now we've got the site title and the navigation, but let's have a look at our design. The site title is kind of the same size, more or less in, in terms of size as the navigation. Um, add after is a super clutch, <laughs> absolutely. So I need to make some changes. So there's a couple of ways that I can do this. I can either click on that specific block. And if I click on the options in the, in the block settings, and say show more settings, it pops the setting sidebar up. And I can then go to the topography and I can make changes to the size. And it's probably going to be, it's currently medium. It's probably going to be, it's currently, I think, probably large. So it's probably medium that I need to move it to. Yes, that's that's kind of what I want. That's one way of doing it. And I can save that and move on. Or I can say, let's um let's leave it on medium for now. Or I can say, I want to make sure that the site title, when I use it across the site, is set to medium. Because later on, I'm going to add the site title to the footer as well. And I don't want it to be nice and big. So what I would do then, and I'm going to show you a nice little thing that I discovered the other day as well. I can, over here, I think it is, uh, reset. Goes back to default. That's very, very cool. And then I can go into the global styles editor, which is that little duotone icon at the top there. And I can go into the appearance of specific blocks and I can go and find the site let me search for it would be easier the site title block there it is and there I can say I want this to specifically be medium so it's the same effect but now if I save this this is going to save it to my global styles not the specific template so the next time that I use the site title in another area, it's going to come out like that. And that's what I want. Okay. You'll notice it's asking me that I want, do I want to save the page and the styles? I can either say yes and it'll save both. For now, I just want to save the global styles. I'm still working with the page. So I'm just going to save the custom styles, hit save, and I'm happy with that. Okay. Andrew says the list view to be very useful, 100%. I discovered the list view recently when I was watching, I think it was Dave Smith on a YouTube video. And that was like a mind blowing moment. Um, okay, so I've got my header. Now, the other thing that I need to do, let's have a look at the header and see what it's doing. <clears throat> what did we say? We said that it was about 1,200 pixels wide, but it was in line with a 1,000 pixel image. So I know I need to sort of get some alignment going on. The other thing that it has is the navigation is all over onto the other side, which I don't currently have. And this is why the row is so handy. Because in the row settings, I select the row and I go, let me zoom out the way, show more settings, I can change justification. Currently justification is justify items left. I can say justify center, not quite what I want. Justify right, not what I want. Justify space, yay. <laughs> okay, that's what I want. So I want there to be space between the items. And by doing that, it moves them both to what I want. Okay, so that's the first thing I can do. Then I can look at, well, I want this to be wide aligned. And if I click on the alignment, I can select the wide width alignment. There we go. So now it's going to be the 1,000 pixels wide. Let's close the side view for a second. And that's what it looks like. Now, what I'm not sure of just yet is when I add the featured image later and wide align that, whether it's going to match up properly. So for now, I'm going to leave it like it is. But the other thing I need to do is there's some padding going on. Here. Now, I don't know exactly what this padding is top and bottom, but I know this is probably going to be 100, and it looks like this is 100 as well. Okay, so let's do that. So if I switch up the list view, and I select the row, and I go all the way down to padding, I can either select the default padding options, or I can tick on the little custom set custom size padding, and I can say I want padding of 100. It doesn't look quite like what I want. So maybe what I want is padding and margin. Not sure yet. Looks a bit too big, but it's kind of getting where I want to go. If I check the unlink sides option, then it'll give me all four options. So right and left, I probably definitely do want 100, but top and bottom, I probably maybe wanted 50. Uh, there's top and there's bottom. 
that's starting to look a little bit better. That's starting to look a little bit more like what I want. Okay, so now I'm starting to build this out. Cool, so that's my header sorted out. Any questions on building out the header before we move on? I haven't saved it to the header template yet. I'll get to that in a second, but any questions on all that before we move on? Okay, there don't seem to be any, any questions, so let's move on. Now I want to start adding the content. How did you space the block again? Good question, Gene. So the first thing I did, let's actually, and this is cool, you have undo buttons in the editor, just like in Word. Not in life, though. <laughs> so I'm going to go undo, and we go undo, and we go undo again. So we're back to here. So the first thing I did was I selected the row, and I said under loud in the settings, I said show more settings. Under, sorry, I'm losing my things here. Under layout justification, I changed the justification to space between items. Then I scrolled down to the padding and I checked the set custom size button, which switches it to a value. And I unticked the unlink sides button, which basically allows me to do, okay, I need to do a value first. Uh, so I set it to 100, and then I said unlink, and then I, that allows me to specify values for all four padding options. And I changed top and bottom to 50. Okay. Happy with that, Gene? The space between the titles and the exact was the justification. Uh, so that was if you select the row, that was in the settings layout justification. Um, so I see Linda's got a question. So because you're block, because you're in block view, if you save it now, it will only save in the block, not the template or global. Uh, no, if I save this now, it's going to save all of this to the template in the database. Um, it won't save it to the file. And I'll show you how you can get it to the file in a second, but it's going to save it to this template in the database. Um, I hope that answers your question. Cool. Gene, are you good? Just checking before we move on. <laughs> Not really, but go on. Um, are you struggling to find that sitting on the row, Gene? You're welcome to unmute if you want to do it verbally. <laughs> I can't get the spacing that you have between the site logo title, the title, and mm -hmm. the sample page thing. I okay. was able to do all the padding, but I can't get. Okay, so click on that. click on the row in the list view. So that she's selecting the row. You got that? Yep. And then I'm just going to hide the settings. And then there's a little three dots next to the row in the list view. Click on that and you should see something that says show more settings. Yep, got that. Okay. Then on the right hand side, the settings should have come up. So it should be block selected. And the first thing you see should be row arranged blocks horizontally. Yes. Okay. And then below that's layout. Yes. And then do you see justification? Yes. Okay. Then do you see this little button, which looks like a TIE fighter from Star Wars? Yes. What happens when you click on that? Nothing. Ah, <laughs> that's interesting. Um, I wonder if you click on the group, what do your group settings look like? Do they look like mine? Okay. Um, yes. And I've done this yeah. before. Mm. And, and this is the first time it hasn't spread out. So. <laughs> Anyway, go ahead. All I've right. done it before. Right. I'll figure it out. I'll uh, move cool. on for just, everyone else. Thank you. <laughs> just, just a quick one that sometimes you need to check because it in that little menu on the on the left to just make sure that your your like site title and navigation are inside the row. It's really easy to drop them at the yes, same level was, as the row. That was the next thing I was going to say. Are they yeah. definitely inside the row and not on the next level? Yes, they are. All right. Okay. Well, Gina, I'll tell you what. If you if you don't come right, um, use create block theme to extract your theme, and we can find a way you can send it to me, and I can see if I can help you with that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So 
I need to, I hate, I hate the Zoom video window. It always gets in my way. <laughs> okay. So now we want to start creating the content. And the content is very simple. Uh, it's just the featured image. It has the title and then it has the page content. Now we'll notice that the featured image and the title are basically wide aligned again, whereas the content is not. The content is set to the content alignment. In the design, it's 655, but in our theme.json, we made it, uh, if we scroll up to the top here, we made it 650, uh, just because I like round numbers. Um, so what we need to do is we need to somehow group these things differently. And this is, again, where groups come in very, very handy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create another group after my first group block. And I'm going to say insert after. So I make sure it's after the group, and I'm going to type in group over there and move the zoom out of the way <laughs> uh, and pop a group in there. Then inside that group, I'm going to create a second group for my image and my, and my title. So for my featured image and for my title. So group. And then we can add featured image. And then after featured image, and this is where, again, I like to use the insert after option, insert after, ah, didn't type the slash, let's forget about that. Featured image, post featured image, there it is. Oh, sorry, not featured image, title. That was silly. <laughs> let's try that again. Um, the other way you can do it is if you select the group, then the little plus sits inside the group and you can say add block there, and then you can go post title. Okay, so the, the thing that we'll notice now is that if we have a look at the group and we have a look at the featured image, the featured image is currently, if we set it to 100 pixels wide, the featured image is wider than our header, we'll notice. So that probably means that the header padding is wrong or something. But what it actually is, is if we change, if we go to the group and we say inner blocks use content width and we disable that, we can either set it or we can disable it. And then that gives us an option to say, set the group to the max wide width. And notice what happens. It went wider than what the top is. So I'm going to go, I'm going to take it back a step. I'm going to say none. And I'm going to say by default, when the group is loaded, it's this inner blocks use content width is enabled. So it says all the inner blocks are using the content width, which is the 650. I don't want that. I want those inner blocks to be a thousand. And this was that problem we had last week and now we don't have it. So I'm gonna disable this. And then I'm gonna set in this order, the group to be a thousand pixels wide. Then I'm gonna select the featured image and make sure that's a thousand pixels wide, it already is. And the post title, make sure that is a thousand pixels wide. So that's gonna make sure that when this renders on my front end, it's gonna be the wide width that I want. And that's what the, that's what the wide width and the content width settings are. The wide width allows me to go wider than the content width. The content width forces me to stick to the content width. But then we'll see that the header is looking wrong. So let's have a look at the header and how we can fix that. If I go back to the header group, I can do the same thing for the header group. I can set it to say, don't use content width. And that's already starting to look better. And if I make it full screen, now I can see what it would look like on a bigger monitor. And I can see that it's not quite there yet. And that's because what I need to do is I need to set the width to a specific width. So I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to say use 1200. And remember in the design, it was 1200. That's how I achieved this. So let me go back. So for that header group, I say use the content width, but I explicitly set it to 1200 or 1200 or what do you want, 1200. And then with the 100 and 100 padding, it lines everything up the way I want it. If I zoom out here to make the screen bigger, for example, you can see it all stays aligned nicely. So that's how you sometimes have to play with your designs, play with your padding um, to get things to look the way you want. Them. Maybe you need to make a group wider than the content width and then use padding. Maybe you need to make it smaller, whatever the case may be. And that's the cool thing about groups is you can, using this inner blocks use content width toggle, you can make your widths wider, widths smaller, make whatever you need to do, and then change things accordingly. Okay. I'm going to hit save here just so I don't lose any of these changes. Um, and then we're going to just look at the list view again. Now, the other thing to notice is 
because I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a bit logically. Because I was working on a screen where I was zoomed in 125%, uh, it means that I don't always see what I need to see. And that's one of the downsides about doing it in this way. So it's always good to check. Um, check whether things are alignment, disable your, your, um, your list view and your settings, make sure things are still looking the way they, they need to. Adrian says, why wouldn't you just remove the right left padding in the header and row and make it a thousand? That's a very good question. Let's find out. Um, so let us go to the group and go to the group settings. And you're saying, take that off. And then it was removing the padding, I think, which was on the row. So let's um, use presets on all of those and disable that. So now it's using uh, default padding. Actually, no. Actually, I can just set this. I can go reset here. Okay, so now it's using default padding. Okay. And then you said set the row to make it a thousand. So that one. Um, so we have to do it on the group to a thousand. And let's see what that looks like. So the so that's what it looks like. It's still aligned nicely, but if we look at the design, the design has some padding around, it, which is why I added the padding. Um, but if you're happy with this look, that's also fine. You know, there's no there's no right or wrong. It's it's now going to be a fight between me and the designer. If the designer really wants the padding there, then I'll need to set the 1 200 and include the padding. If the designer looks at this and is happy, then we're good to go. Uh, Adrian, I hope that answers your question. Uh, I'm going to undo those changes so I get my padding back because <laughs> my designer wants the padding. <laughs> um, Gene says, that helped my header spacing. Yay, it looks like mine. Awesome. That's great to hear. <laughs> okay. Um, the padding is more, I think the padding is more just because I'm trying to follow the design than anything else. Uh, the padding, the, the design has this padding around it. Um, but there's there's multiple ways to, to do the same thing. Okay. So now we can add the post content and the post content is just going to sit below the group. Uh, so I'm going to add post content after the group. So we'll say insert after, and we're just going to say post content. Um, and we'll notice that the post content is not set to, let's go here. The post content is super, super wide. So now we can say use the content width and it forces that to the content width. Um, so because we set the content width and because we've enabled it, it says use it. So now we're getting close to that design that we have in, in our design. Okay. So if you'd like to add the post content after the group, um, you can go ahead and do that. Okay, any questions on all of this before we move on? Um, otherwise, we can we can add the button. While folks are thinking about questions, what a good developer would do now is start testing this on the front end. So load up some default content, fire up the web website, fire up the page, make sure it looks the way you need it to look. Um, any benefit to putting the post content into the group? Uh, the only benefit I could think of was if you want the post content to be at the thousand pixels wide, which it was already, so not necessarily there because of the settings we've done. If you wanted it wider, then that would be useful. Um, but for our purposes, specifically because of the way this side is set up, um, there's not there's not that there's not a requirement for that. Uh, Laura says I do not have justification for the post content block. Um, the justification for post content is slightly different. It just has center, left, and right. Um, if you don't have it, I don't know why that is. Uh, it might be a setting somewhere, but but by default in my, in my install, it is there. I don't know what the reason is why it wouldn't be there, but you'll notice it's very different to what it is for Zoom, um, for a group. So a group, the justification options, no, not a group, sorry, uh, the row. For the row, the justifications are left, right, or space. For the post contents, it's just left, right, or center. Um, if you don't have that, there might be a bug somewhere. I know sometimes if you... If you uh, leave a bug in your theme.json file, some things load and some things don't. So it might be something along those lines, um, but it, it should just be there underneath the, the content. The nice thing about this is you could even, if you wanted to, you could say, I want that, let's say the designer says they want specifically for the page, they want the content to be, let's say 750. 
then I could set it to 750 just for the page if I wanted to on that block. Uh, but I don't want to do that today. <laughs> okay. Let's save this. And we're happy with that. And then finally, the footer. Um, the footer is very simple. It's just, again, the site title is some text. It uses the same kind of setup as the header. So what's cool about that is we can basically take the header group and we can, and I love this, and we can say copy block because it's a whole block and it will copy all the inner blocks as well. And then we can go right down the bottom here and we can say, uh, we can add a, uh, sorry, we can click on the bottom here and we can just go, I think it's control V. Uh, it doesn't seem to be working. Okay, let me, let me do it this way. Let me say insert after that group and then I'm just going to move it down a bit. And if we just go control V, it'll pop that in there and I can just pop it at the bottom and there it is. So that's kind of cool. I can use control V, control C, control V, copy paste, whatever the case is. Um, the, the footer is slightly different because it, it, okay, it's not. It does have the same padding, so that's perfect. We can leave that like that. Um, the only difference is it doesn't have the navigation. So in the list view, we can remove the navigation. So that's done. And then we can say after the title, we want to uh, insert a paragraph, which is there already. And we can start typing proudly powered by WordPress. And then let's just grab the wordpress.org URL. And we can just pop it in there. And what I like about this as well, I can just copy, I can just select the text and either use right click and paste or just control V and it'll paste the link in straight away for me, which is very, very cool. If you haven't seen that in the block edits, it's one of my favorite things. I can just control V and it'll paste the link over the text created for me. I'm very happy with that. So that is perfect. Okay, so if you haven't done that already, you can copy your group block by clicking on the options, saying copy block. And then after your main group, you can say insert after, and then you can paste and then you can move it up and down if you need to. Um, Laura says found the toggle out button, awesome. That's one of the things about the site edit. It does require some time playing with it, using it, in investigating how things work, um, figuring all of these things out. It's a lot of fun, um, but it does. it's, it's, it's a new learning curve. Um, and sometimes us, do, us old dogs it, it, it struggle to learn new tricks. Um, so that's my page. Now let's save that. Is this instead of using a footer template part? Yes, James. So what we're going to do now is the next step, which is we're going to turn the header and footer into template parts. And I'm going to show you two ways that you can do it. Um, so it's a very good question. You, you, you've seen where I'm going with this. <laughs> um, let me grab a sip of coffee before we move on. I'm just glad we still got about half an hour. Left. Okay. So what I'm going to do very quickly now, and you're welcome to do this along with me if you want, is go into your code editor or wherever you can access your files and delete the header.html file. Um, mainly because I forgot to delete it before I uploaded this up. <laughs> so we're going to leave it like that. And we're going to go back into the editor. And now we're going to take that group and we're going to turn it into a template part from the editor, which is very, very cool. So again, if I click on the three dots, the menu comes up and down here, I can say create template part. So from the editor, if I'm happy that this header template is ready to rock and roll, I can just create the template part from here. So I click on create template part. It'll ask me to give it a name. I'm just gonna call it header for now. And then it'll say, is this a general template part or a header template or a footer template? It's my header template. So I'm gonna hit that, uh, select that. And then I'm gonna hit create. And now it will go and it'll create the header template part for me which is very, very cool, okay? With the, um, the bottom group, the other option that I can do, uh, Laura, I just went into the, the either my text editor, which in my case was Visual Code Studio, or just your file browser, uh, and just browse to, let's open my file browser. Oh, wait, it's not opening up. Um, just browse to wherever your site, the local site is. No, that's not my local site. That's not my local site. Sites, um, in my case, Learn Press, WP Content, themes, let's code workshop. And then I just deleted the file. That's all I did. Um, and the other way to do it, if you already have the file there, and you just want to copy the content is you can use the same copy functionality. So you can say here, copy block. 
then you can switch over to your footer template part, which is there. And then you can just click inside the template part and again, use control V or right click paste and paste your content straight, um, which is another cool way of doing. It. So this is what, this is what, these are the things that I love about the block editor and the site editor specifically, is it enables those kind of um, very normal, very I'm used to using copy paste in Google Docs or Word or wherever within my WordPress environment. So I'm going to save this as well. Uh, I want to save the page on the footer, that's fine. So we're going to save that. So now we've got a template part header with content and we've got a template part footer with content. So now we go back to our template and we say, right, let's replace those groups with the header and footer. Um, I saw that question, I'll come back to that in a second. So here I'm just going to say, right, remove the group. Don't need that. Remove this group. Don't need that. Um, and then let's, I don't know why there's a header there now. I think things went a bit weird on me earlier. But this is, a, hang on. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kick here. I'm going to say insert before, and I'm going to slash template part, and I could just choose the header and the footer. So I'm going to just go header, uh, and then I'm asking me, do I want to choose or a blank one? I want to choose the current one, and there we go. Uh, something's gone wrong. My header's gone wonky. Um, I don't know what happened there. Let me remove this. Something's gone wrong. Yes, you're right. My whole environment is frozen. <laughs> you know what's going on here? Page is unresponsive. You're right, it's unresponsive. <laughs> um, I broke something. Isn't that fun? You selected the wrong group to make. Ah, that's what I did. Okay. Um, now my whole site's broken. Let's exit. Ooh, that's fun. <laughs> okay, the dashboard still works. Let's go back here. Editor kind of still works. Back into my template parts. Okay, let's just delete the header. Um, that's fine. Let's go into my templates, go into my page template. Okay, that template part's been removed. That's fine. Okay, it hasn't saved it, so the group is still there, which is great. So let's turn this into my header again. So let's try this again. Create template part. It's a header template part. Let's call it header. Create. That's what I wanted. Oh, you see it pops it in already. That's why. <laughs> I missed that part. So it automatically replaces the group with the actual header template. So I don't have to make the change for myself. With the other one, I, I did the copy into the file. So let's remove, sorry, again, Zoom is in my way. Uh, let's remove this, remove the group, and then let's insert the footer. So we'll say insert after, and I'm gonna go template part this time. And I'm gonna choose the header, the footer template part. There we go. And there's my page. We'll notice that my, my featured group with the, um, the, the post title and, and that kind of stuff went missing. Uh, because I've messed things up. So I apologize for that, folks. Uh, but it gives you the basic idea. Okay. There were some questions and some comments. So we're going to run through those quickly. You selected the wrong group. Yes. Well spotted, Robin, for that one. Um, how did you get the post content to be 650? I only seem to be at the none white option if it's inside a group. I didn't put the post content inside the group. Uh, if you have a look here, the group for the header is there. Let me, let me replicate the other group for the, that we did earlier. So let's go insert after uh, group. And it was, let me find my notes here. Uh, group, group, feature image. Yeah, so let's add the feature image again. Boom. And then let's add the title. There we go. And then for the group, I had. Um, <clears throat> Let me check my notes here. First group, first feature image. So the feature image, I said wide alignment. And the title, I said wide alignment. Um, and the question was, uh, how did you get the post content to be 650? So I, on the post content, I said, I made sure that the inner blocks use content width under layout was selected. So by default, when it popped in, it was wide. And then I enabled that and that forces it to the 650 as set in, in the theme JSON. 
um, you'll see if you go and change the theme JSON and refresh this, then the post content will be that width. Um, let me know if that if that solves your problem or not while I sip of coffee. Awesome. Um, I'm glad I was able to figure that one out. Robin says, this is one of the reasons that naming list view blocks will be helpful. Yes, agreed, Robin. Uh, being able to name them will be very helpful because now I just see a bunch of groups. Um, and I'm pretty sure there is a ticket for that. We're going to, we're going to have one soon. But yes, it would be nice if I could say, uh, this is my, my post header group. And this is my, or the, this, in this case, it's the header. But if this was my post header group, so featured image type, and the next one was whatever, um, agreed 100%. Okay, let's save that. So what's cool about this is now we have created a template and we've created the header and footer template parts. Um, we now want to create the rest of the templates and we want to keep going, we want to keep going. Uh, there's not going to be enough time to do them all today. So the other one I want to try and see if we can cover today is the single post template. So in other words, the template that gets displayed when a single post is, is rendered. Um, oh yes, there was a question about, can you make more than one header and footer template? I'm pretty sure you can. Um, so let's, in, in the template parts section, Let's say add new. I don't think you can give them the same name. So we'll just call this one header two, for example, um, and we'll create it. And there you go. And I can put content in there and then you can use different headers on different pages and different footers on different pages. Um, and that's another cool thing about doing it in the site editor versus in the WordPress way. In the WordPress way, you have to do it in PHP and then you have to call a different one. In, the, in this way, you can just build it all up and you're good to go. Um, so yes, you can create more than, than one header and footer template and use different templates in different places. You can create multiple general templates and use them all over the place. Um, it's a very cool feature. Let's delete that one. Okay, um, no problem. Let's move on and have a look at the design for the single template. So the single template is very, what am I doing? I'm reading things around. <laughs> the single template, where is it now? Let me find it. Yeah, single post. The single post is kind of very similar to the page. Uh, it has the header at the top, featured image in the title, so that's similar to the page. The content is similar. The only real difference is the comments at the bottom. And so what we can do is we can use our page template content and get going with that already. So if we go into templates and we say, right, let's add a new, and it's the single template. Now, if you are using WordPress 6.0 without the Gutenberg plugin, that single template option doesn't exist. Or single item post, one of the two doesn't exist. And that's why I want Gutenberg installed. With, with, um, with 6.1, that option will become available and you can just go ahead and create it. So we'll select that one and it will start doing things for us. But we don't want this content. We want to start with the page content. Um, so let us go into the list view and remove the query loop. And then let's save this template. That's fine. And then let's go back to the page template. And guess what? We're going to copy everything. So there's an option in the editor. If you click on the editor options, which is this button on the side here, where you can say copy all blocks down the bottom. There. So this will copy all of the content from this page. The other way you can do it is you can switch on the code editor and manually select, but I don't want to do that because I'm lazy. Uh, so I'm going to say copy all blocks. So now all the blocks have been copied into my clipboard. And now I can go back to my sync template and simply click on the top empty block and control V and there we go. So it's already imported all that content for me. Now, what I would like to see in the future is the ability to, when you create a new page, to choose another page to base it off. So I don't have to do this copy paste part, uh, but that I think is, is really, really cool. Um, Andrew says you can sort of identify group blocks if you go into the advanced settings. Yes, and you add an anchor. That's one way of doing it. So what Andrew is saying there is if you go into, for example, uh, uh, let's say the header and you go to advanced, you can give it classes and various other things and that'll, that'll identify it for you. So that's another way of doing it. Why did the name change to single foot up top? Okay, so it's because, so single is the name of the, the template that I'm working with. And then this little part here is the, is the area that I'm, that I'm working on. So that's the header. So it shows that, I'm, that I've got the header there. So I can edit the, he the header inside the template and it'll save it back to the header. And I can edit the footer inside the template and they'll save it back to the footer. Very, very cool functionality. Otherwise, if it shows nothing, then you're just working inside the content of this template. Um, okay, so this is all good. The only thing that we need additionally now is to add the separate, uh, moving things around again. 
the separator, all of this stuff over here, and the comments. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So after the post content, <clears throat> I'm just looking at my notes very quickly. Um, blah, 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 blah. After the post content, we want a little bit of space. You see, there's a bit of space after the content. So we can use a very simple block called a spacer block. So I'm going to say insert after, and I'm going to go spacer. And there we go. And by default, the spacer in this instance, let me just switch on the settings, um, defaults to 100 pixels. I can change that to whatever I want. I'm going to make it 30 pixels just for the sake of making it a certain size. So that'll make sure there's always 30 pixels of space between the content and whatever's next. If we go back to the design, then there is the line, which is right at the top of the post meta. So I need to add a line. And that line is called a separator in the block editor. So let's add the separator. So there's the separator there. And you'll notice that the separator by default is this little short line. In the settings for the separator, I can change the separator line option. So I can change the default style, or I can say a wide line, and then it stretches wide. And that wide is that 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 con that wide width. So in our case, 100 pixels wide width. Um, so that's good. That's exactly what I want. Below the separator, I have the, let me zoom in there quickly. I have the posted date in whatever category. I have the author, and then I have the tags. And the cool thing about the editor is there are blocks for all of these. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a row block. We're going to add a group again, and then a row block because we want the things aligned next to each other. And if you remember when we did the header, we did a row. And the difference between a group and a row is if you add something to a group and you add multiple blocks, the blocks align below each other. If you add them to a row and you go multiple blocks, the blocks align next to each other. So that's where rows and groups can be very handy. So let's add another group first, just because I like grouping things. <laughs> and then inside of the group, we will add, actually, no, not there. We want to add it there. We will add a row. Good. And then we will add, I'm just checking my notes, the post date, post author, categories, and tags blocks. So we'll just do them one after the other. So let's go. Post date, boom. And then let me move this up the way. So I always want to make sure the row is selected. So after post date, it's going to be uh, post author, I think it was. Yes. Post author, boom. And then we select the row again. And then it was post uh, categories. Let me select the row again. You'll notice when the row is selected, the plus is there. When the row is not selected, the plus is outside. So it's always handy to check that you're on. There I can select the group, but currently I'm on the row. And then the other one was tags. Tags. There we go. Now in the design, you'll see that author is there. Tags are over there. Uh, I'm adding the date as well next to it. Um, so we might want to do some alignment, which we can do. Um, so again, if I select the row and I change the justification to spacing, there it is. Um, in, my, in my design, I've got the posted by date in books there and then the author below it. So what I might want to do is have two rows, two groups, one below the other. For now, I'm going to leave it like it is because I'm quite happy with the way this looks. But I can use rows and groups to rearrange these things around a bit. Then I've got a little bit more space in the comments. So let's go back to the editor. Uh, and I'm going to add another spacer. Um, so let's say after this group, let's just say insert after, zoom window, insert after, and I'm going to add another spacer. I'm going to make that 30 as well, just for the sake of being formalized. And then let's just check the theme. And then it's just the comments. So go away, zoom. <laughs> can't click on my tabs when that happens so then after the spacer and this is one of my favorite things insert after and i can just add a comments block and the comments block handles everything for me so it handles move this up the way it handles that section it handles the author comments all of that is all built into the comments block for me 
if we open up the comments block, you'll see it has comments title, comment template, which has more blocks and more blocks and more blocks and more blocks. Now within the comments, we'll notice if we look at the design, let's just close all of this down quickly. Comments are not supposed to be aligned so wide. So again, what are we gonna do? We're gonna change alignment. Um, so let's go back to there and then let's enable the settings. Now comments, I can't change that alignment. I don't have that option to change alignment. But what do I have the option for? Groups. So let's add a group just before comments. Why is that not working? There we go. Couldn't spell. And then let's move. And what I love about the list view is I can now drag, I can click on comments and I can drag it into the group. Uh, it doesn't work. No, it's not going to work. Why is it not working? Sometimes this doesn't work 100%. The other option is I can just select it here and drag it up. So let's try that. Um, <clears throat> let's try and drag it up into there. Doesn't seem to be working. Not a problem. Because comments is handling all the functionality for me, I can just literally say, remove comments here, select the group, inside the group, add comments, and there we go. And it's the right width now, so it's gonna lay out the way I want it to, it's all good. Um, the other thing that I want to look at is, notice that the row for the post meta is aligned wide. So right now that's not currently the case. So again, we go back to the row, uh, sorry, back to the group, and we say there, don't use content width, use wide alignment, perfect. Go back to the row, make sure it's using the, the max 100%, uh, sorry, 1,000 pixels wide. And we are, oh, that's not what I wanted. Why is it so wide? Oh, maybe it's supposed to be like that. Let's just make this, no, that's not supposed to be like that. Um, show the settings here. And something wrong. <laughs> um, got this working the other day. I'm going to have to figure out why that's doing that, but it's a lot wider than I need it to be. Um, let me check my notes here. This content space group. Not quite sure why that's doing it so wide. Um, might just be me, I've done something silly, but it gives me the options to go wide line, whatever the case may be. And then I can just save this template. And now it's ready to be used, it's ready to be used on my site, it's all good to go. Okay, so that's basically how you can create your pages, your, your templates, your primary templates. So you would create one for your 404 using the various blocks you need, you could create one for search, all the different kinds of things. The last thing you're gonna to want to do if you're building a template for a client is you're going to want to export this to files. Um, if you haven't seen this process before, I'm going to show it to you now. It's a plugin called the Create Block Theme plugin. I'm going to install it very quickly. And if we go here to plugins, and we're going to say add new, and we're going to say create block theme. Here it is over here. Um, Sarah used this last week in, in, in the session that she did. Um, I'm using it all the time to export my themes. And what it basically does is it takes everything that is that is saved in the database. So all of the template files in the database and it exports them to theme files. So let me show you that very quickly in my code editor. Currently, I only have a footer HTML part, which is empty. And I only have an index template, which has some code, which is what we started with. And then I have whatever was in my theme JSON. If I now go to appearance create block theme and I use the overwrite option, it's gonna take all of the changes that I've just done in my templates and my parts and whatever else that's in the database and write it to those theme files. So if I say create theme, it does all what it needs to do. And now let's go back to the code editor. And there we go. There's my page with all of my page code. There's my single with all of my single code. There's my header with all of my header content. There's my footer with all of my footer content. So I can do everything in the editor. I can do design, styling, pages, templates, headers, footers, whatever. 
and then using create block theme, export it all to files. Um, it's a great way of building a theme if you've never written code before. Uh, Michael, I agree, it is too cool. Um, and that's one of the things that I love about the block editor person. Um, I have been, so, so those of you who know, um, I'm sponsored by Automatic, um, but I was a block editor fan before I joined Automatic. Uh, I think it's one of the reasons why they hired me, but I just love the fact, I'm, I'm a developer who loves automation. I love things to be done for me, uh, mundane things, boring things. Um, and the ability to be able to design in the editor and then just click a button and dump it all into files for me is just amazing. So that is the process you can follow. Um, hopefully there are some tips and tricks that you've learned from all of that. The other thing that I want to mention before we sort of start wrapping up is if you have um, customizations that go beyond what the block editor enables, your theme does still have and should still have a style.css file. So once you created the basic layouts, you can then do style changes in your style CSS. Um, and then that becomes what we call a hybrid theme. So it has block elements and custom elements. So don't feel like you need to be limited to what the block editor gives you. Uh, you, do, you are still able to register functions like PHP and all of that cool stuff. You are still able to do style.css. So your traditional knowledge that you have about building themes is still valid um, when you're building block themes. Okay. Uh, Robin says, please go through the choice in the create block page to generate the files. Perfect. No problem. I will do that. So once I've saved all my changes, so let's go back a step. So the first thing I do is I install the create block theme plugin. This is a plugin that, that is basically um, actively developed by the WordPress theme team contributors, uh, which is why it's by WordPress.org. I don't see it going away anytime soon. I see it. It's getting better and better. There's even a, a pull request that I saw for it the other day that enables you, allows you to add fonts using create block theme. So you don't have to code it yourself. You do it through the plugin, which is exciting. Um, so I install that plugin. That plugin adds a menu to the appearance list called create block theme. I click on that. And then I select the overwrite ver option. And overwrite basically takes all the changes in the database and writes all those changes to files. And then I just hit create theme. Um, so Robin, I hope you caught that. If you didn't, you can, you can always watch the video, video afterwards. Okay, uh, somebody said, let's just go here, what they, it doesn't work for all blocks. I'm not quite sure what that was about. Um, oh, that was probably about the naming. Um, awesome. Any questions before we, before we wrap up today? We do still have a few minutes left. So if there are any other questions about developing block themes or the process that we went through today, um, please feel free to shout, to shout down. Okay, we don't seem to have any questions, which is, um, Baylor says, this is really cool, need to learn. I agree. There's some really cool things coming uh, as well. Um, so yes, uh, start playing with it. What I, <clears throat> what I always recommend to folks, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna share this now because it's a good thing to, to share, is download and use existing block themes and see how they're fit together and see what they do. A good place to start, there's a theme called Blockbase. Uh, it's developed by the, the automatic themes team. Um, and it's a very, it's a very simple theme, but it's a good base. That's why it's called block base ha -ha, to start off with. So install block base and then go into each page. Let, let me actually do it now. So let's install block base very quickly. Um, da -da 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 -da. Taking its time. Um, while it says, since we're creating a new theme, we don't have to worry about any updates changing the theme. Correct. Linda, that's 100% correct. If you create a brand new theme for your site, the only updates that are going to happen are updates that you create. Um, so yes, no updates should affect you. Um, <clears throat> let's activate this theme. And what's cool about Blockbase is it comes with, let's go into the code view for Blockbase quickly. It comes with a very opinionated theme.js. Uh, theme so go through and learn what these different things do uh, and learn the colors and all of those kind of things. And then it has all of the primary templates. So it has a 404, an archive, a blank, a footer only, those are custom index page. So, so look at how those things work. Look at what the 404 does and how that works. Look at the search and see how the search works. Load it up in your editor and see what the blocks are that are being used. Um, it also has parts. It has footer and header by default, but then it has a whole bunch of other headers and footers. 
It also has more advanced functionality, like it has some patterns, which if you haven't seen patterns yet, don't stress too much about those, but it's good to learn. Um, but it's a good sort of base to work with. Uh, it also has some images, some fonts, various other things. And the cool thing about block base is you can then use that as a base for your next project. So you can go in and you can make changes to styles and colors and whatever else you want. And then using create block theme, you can export that to a new um, theme for your site. I've actually done that on my own site. I don't mind sharing the URL, it's my name.com. I took, okay, it's not running it now, it's running something else. Uh, but I took block base and I built a custom theme for my site. Um, I'm not gonna enable it now because it'll be logging into my, my database backend, but I created a custom theme for my site and now that's running on my site. I never have to worry about updates. It's a very simple theme because I just need it for my blog, but I use block base as a base and I change some things and move some things around. Uh, it's a great place to start. So if you want to start building themes, start with block base uh, or any other other base themes, 2021, uh, 2022, 2023, uh, other folks have built, have built base themes, start with those, learn how they work, learn how they fit together and then build from there. Uh, awesome. Folks, we're coming close to time, so I'm going to call it uh, for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope, I hope there's been something useful and something interesting today. Um, I won't see you all next week because I'm going to be uh, on leave next week, but I will be running another session um, next week Thursday. I have no idea what it will be yet. It will be something to do with themes. Maybe we'll do patterns. I don't know. Uh, if you have ideas for things you want me to do, please feel free to comment um, in the meetup uh, comments for this one, You know, things that you want to learn for next sessions. Uh, but thank you all for joining me. Um, Jean, before we go, Jean said, uh, will there be security issues not using your own theme? If you're using a block theme, probably not because there's no PHP to worry about. Uh, it's all HTML. So I don't see any security issues. The only time you'd have security issues is if you start doing your own custom code and you're not doing proper security on that code. But block themes, there would be no security issues. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. Have a wonderful Thursday and enjoy the rest of your week and your weekend.